Rokinon 14mm 2.8 lens. I, uh, I really wanted to do this review for a long time. It's a popular lens because it's very, very affordable. But why is it affordable? What is the purpose of this lens? I'm going to do a hands-on test for you. I have the lens right here. I probably had it for about almost two weeks now. And I've just, I've been really dying to make this review because I think it's a really, really awesome lens. And it's something that I always wanted to add into my line, especially for my... Uh, my wedding photography and uh, you know everything along that line. So let's dive into it I'll show you photos. I'll show you video I'll show you how it works and everything how it goes and give you some tips on how to use the lens. Let's go right now So this little guy right here is your well lens This is the broken on 14 millimeter 2.8 now, let's just dive into some of the basics, and as I said, uh, throughout this video, I'll throw up some, some photos and some video, and I'll show you how everything works. But this is a manual focus lens, so it has this big hood here that just comes off, so let's put that aside. So there you go. That's what this lens looks like. It has a built-in pedal hood. So the reason I bring that up first is because a lot of people complain that, oh, well, I can't use on screw, uh, screw filters or anything of that nature. But, you know, with these, they're always going to be bulb-shaped because that's how it is, and you need the pedal uh, the pedal lenses so it doesn't distort and you see the actual lens hood um, within the shot. So that's important. So invest in some leaf filters if you're going with this quality. So as I mentioned, uh, these broken on these Sam Yangs, these Bowers, all those names that you may not know, you know, for example, you know, the broken on name here, I don't know if you can see it. Um, they make manual focus lenses. There's eight mil, uh, eight millimeters. There's, you know, cinema lenses that they make, uh, 85, 1.4s, all that kind of stuff, all that good stuff. But are they really worth it? Are they really valuable? Well, the good thing about these and, you know, so uh, once again, we're just talking about the 14 millimeter. This is $350 and it's compatible with both your crop sensors. So your APS-C, your, uh, your DX for Nikon and your full frame uh, DSLRs. So these will work for both and I have owned both systems. I've tested them on both systems. Right now I only use full frame anymore and with the videos you'll be seeing obviously I shot them with this and you get no no really bad distortion. You don't really get any vignetting. It's actually a really really strong lens and performs really freaking well. So with this lens and they even mentioned it, they have a height a, a hybrid a spherical uh, uh, element that they put in here to help with minimal distortion and chromatic aberration. Uh, you know, distortion with how everything looks and how the picture uh, is kind of formed, like it might give that pin cushiony type of look, like around the corners. And for the uh, chromatic aberration, you might get that weird color fringing, uh, you know, around someone's shoulder or something like that. You might see them purple or green if you have a really, really bad lens. So in testing this out a lot, I have not seen much chromatic, I don't know, I haven't really seen any aberration whatsoever. Uh, I worked with this a little bit in um, uh, with the sun outside today, and I did notice that the glare gets a little uh, gets pretty strong because they mentioned that they have multi coated, uh, basically lens flare or whatever. And I noticed that that sounds you know that's that does get a little difficult. You do see a little tiny bit of ghosting, but uh, it's not really a deterrent whatsoever for the price. The big question is also, will this autofocus? Well, if you notice on the back, I'll take the the back off here. This will meter because ah, you can't really. You can't really see it, but this does have the pins here that will meter. So this will allow you to meter. But the thing is, no matter the body, no matter what, um, you could get one without without it being chipped, so you won't get the autofocus confirm uh, sound. But um, essentially, it's not an autofocus lens. It is manual focus. But really, there's my biggest tip to you is understanding that because when I got this lens, I was kind of thrown off a little bit. And I just didn't understand. Well, what the hell is the point? So there's basically, in my opinion, this had the uh, the uh, the focusing ring has a huge, a long throw, meaning it takes a while to get to one side. So, you know, I'll start at the one side and get to the other, you know, I'll do it myself. You know, it's really, really, really long throw. So that's, a, that's okay. The build quality that's is sturdy, so I don't feel uncomfortable if, you know, if you gotta use it a little harder. It's smooth, it could be a little more smoother to make the throw a little less, to be honest with you. But essentially you have it to your infinity side. I'm gonna try to see if I can get you right here. So to your infinity side, all the way until you hit your 28 uh, centimeters, which is how close this will focus. So essentially, you're only going to be on two sides of the focus ring. Anything in the middle, as I said, I'll even throw up some video, is essentially kind of useless. Um, so you're either at the 28 centimeter side or you're at the infinity side to get an entire room in focus or the 28 centimeters to get, you know, as I said, I showed my Polaroid uh, to get like just something like that in focus. And to be in focus, you're about, I'd say about, you know, the 28 centimeters, you're, 
you know, uh, three inches away, you know, just, uh, just give or take. So with everything aside, it's a really strong performing lens. The focus throw is a little annoying. The build quality is fantastic. It actually has 14 elements in 10 groups, but you're not going to get really much bokeh. You're not going to get anything, uh, you know, mind blowing in regards to that. But the one huge thing that a lot of people forget when you're using these manual focus lenses or these older lenses is, especially on the Nikon side, when you see this aperture ring right here, you might be thinking, oh, well, that could be cool for video or something like that. Well, essentially, if you don't put this to its maximum point, which is f22 on the lens, it, the camera won't work and it won't read it. So what you do, as soon as you get this lens, you have to put it to, I don't know if you can hear the clicking, Put it, set it to f22 right away and put it on your camera. If not, you're gonna get uh, error messages and you're gonna be afraid. So don't be afraid, it's gotta be on f22 so the camera knows its maximum aperture and everything in between, you just use it normally, uh, you know, because this is a constant uh, 2.8 lens. So no matter what focus, no matter what anything, you're pretty much. When looking at the pictures of this, as I said, it's actually pretty crisp, especially clear dead this, you know, down the center. Uh, once again, I was really, really nervous when I bought this, and I'm like, ah, you always want that autofocus confirmation. You always want, you always want to, to not have to rely just on your eye. But as I said, knowing that basically you only use two sides of the lens is so, so simple. And when I was showing the video of when I was walking or when I was just panning between my. I think I had my 60 millimeter my, uh, macro lens and my Polaroid. I was trying to show the jelloing effect and the jelloing effect really isn't there, which is amazing because this isn't even the cinema version that they make. So that works out really well, but you do see a little bit of the distortion, but that's only because it's the 15 millimeters and that's what you're gonna get in an ultra wide lens. And also I even uh, handheld this down to a sixth of a second and it works really well. I did that for some of the video and you saw me moving around from my cameras from my desk to like my dresser or my stairs. And once again, you're ultra, ultra wide, so you don't really have to worry about having uh, vibration reduction, image stabilization, or vibration control, because or optical stabilization, because essentially you don't need it, you're ultra wide, and that compensates pretty much enough for, um, for the video side of it, for your handshake. Well, I got this at a really great price, but for 350, you know, 300, $350, $350 is this Rokinon 14 millimeter AE 2.8 worth it? I actually really, really enjoy this lens and I really am gonna incorporate this more into my wedding shooting because I wanna incorporate just a different landscapey type of look and have, and you know, playing with uh, rule of thirds more with my couples, uh, you know, going down the line. But overall, the Rokinon 14 millimeter is, it's, it's built like a tank. Oh, there's one thing I wanna say and that's how to mount this lens. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut it off there, but it's just like, well, how do you do it? Because it does get awkward with the way the hood is. But essentially with any hood like this, with anything that looks with the bulb shape, essentially you wanna obviously take the back cap off, but you're gonna see your line right here. So there's your line right here, that's where you line up. And on the Canon side, it's obviously uh, your end of white. And you just start from here, so you hold on from the actual lens hood. It's lens hood, it's, I mean, it's plasticky, but it's really, really sturdy. And then you just mount it that way. So, you know, you start with the white side here, boom, and you go up until it clicks. And that's the easy way of mounting this lens. 350 bucks, you get a 115 degree view. Focusing is really, really simple. I, I, I mean, it's out. It's a, if you're really, really interested in a 14 millimeter line, because I have the uh, 24 to 70, uh, 70 to 260 millimeters, and I always wanted something just a little bit wider. But the 14 to 24 on the Nikon side is stupidly expensive and overrated, and everyone just claims it to be a paperweight. Uh, their 14 millimeter lens 2.8 alone, just just the lens that they have, is really really bulky. By the way, this is only about like uh, you know one and a half or like 1.2 pounds or something, so it's not even that heavy on uh, you know even a crop sensor. Um, you know the Nikon even runs up to, and it's, as I mentioned the weight because that's really bulky. That even runs up you know 1,400, 1,600 dollars. So there isn't really a ton of alternatives, but these are a fantastic alternative. Eric Rossi, the guy with the eye, the 14 millimeter 2.8, a very, very, very strong ultra wide and affordable lens for your crop sensor for your full frame DSLRs. If you guys, has, if you guys have any questions or comments, please write them down below. Once again, this is not a autofocus lens. It will confirm if you get the AE, it will confirm it will meter. So you can actually meter and everything will work, but you can't autofocus it. But essentially, you're pretty much wide open anyway if you're using the infinity and you're going to be all the way on the other side to your 28 centimeters, your 28 centimeters um, at, you know, for your close-up shots, which you won't get a lot of bokeh anyway. So that's all I got. Questions or comments down below. Would you invest in a lens like this? Pretty freaking good.